They say no problem if it's artificial. Better living through chemistry. And progress is our most important product. The initials to remember are G. When you cross a pig with a tomato, doesn't help the taste of a BLT. And there's a plague of food that's upon the earth brought to you by the makers of DDT. Enjoy the vaccines in your carrots and the antibiotics in your peas. The herbicide resistant corn on the cob and the corn gene splice with allergy. Six AM and another beautiful Indian summer day in Arroyoville. You're tuned to Case Age ninety nine point seven on your dial, home of the sweetest smelling music in the valley. Enjoy this one with your first cup. In the mid nineteen nineties, Americans began eating genetically engineered food. You didn't know that, did you? That's because no one told you. Our government has decided not to label genetically modified foods. The biotech corporations and the big food companies know that if these foods were labeled, people wouldn't buy them. Did you know that Kellogg's uses GE corn in its cereals in the US but puts non-GE corn in its cereals exported to Europe? That's because Europeans don't want to eat genetically engineered foods. At least they have a choice. Here's another fact. Our BGH, the bovine growth hormone given to cows that is in all of our non-organic milk products, is banned in every civilized country except our own. And did you know that 70% of the food on supermarket shelves contains at least one genetically engineered ingredient? Biotech companies want us to believe that GE foods are just as good, if not better, than natural foods and are the solution to the world's hunger problems. Is that hogwash or what? I'm almost there. Yeah, everything's fine. If, if all goes well, I should be back by the weekend. How's Dad? Great. Yeah, I had a good breakfast. I'm fine, Mom, really. All right. I'll see you this weekend. Bye, Mom. Love you, too. Say hi to Dad. Bye-bye. You bet, Mom. Bye-bye. Sorry about flipping you off. Ugh. Where are you headed? Arroyoville. Me too. I'm going to be working at the Rolling Thunder Organic Farm. Started hitching three days ago from Humboldt County. It's been cool. By the way, my name is Amber Turquoise. What's yours? Daryl. Hi, Daryl. 
Actually, Turquoise isn't my real last name. It's Johnson. <laughs> Can you believe it? I hear Royalville is supposed to be a pretty cool place. Yeah. Hey, look. Can you stop? Earthships are these passive solar homes that use recycled and natural materials like dirt and old tires. They're totally off the grid. Like, they use solar electricity and water catchment. And low sun goes through those south-facing windows in the, in the winter and keeps the house just totally toasty. I mean, it's such a cool idea. I don't know why everyone can't just live in harmony with the earth like that. Which reminds me, this guy that picked me up when I was hitching south of San Francisco gave me a tape. It's got some great songs on it. You want to hear it? Sure. Multi-level business deal Begins behind closed doors When 40 people $40. Natural foods support the human genetic system. How nourishing can it be to ingest the gene from some herbicide when you eat a soy product? And world hunger isn't about too little food, it's about the politics of greed. The big corporations want one thing and one thing only, huge profits. They'll own the patents on any seed they choose to manipulate in any way. Many of the seeds are sterile, so farmers have to come back each year and buy new seeds. The seeds that aren't sterile can result in genetic drift, contaminate organic farms, and make the proliferation of genetic engineering a fait accompli. A fait, a fait, a fait accompli. <laughs> Here's the deal, plain and simple. Biotech's plan is to control agriculture and world food supply. And the only way to stop that is to put a moratorium on GE foods until more extensive testing is done. It's important to understand genetic engineering disrupts the sequential unfolding of intelligence at the most fundamental level of the cell. Genetic engineering injects a gene of one species into an entirely different species. It is not a coherent, time-tested evolutionary event. Think about it. The scientists working with GE are not so different than children playing with matches. Are we going to wait until the fire starts? A fire leveled a university laboratory conducting research on fast-growing, genetically engineered poplar trees. The Earth Liberation Front is claiming responsibility in yet another episode of eco-terrorism. Speaking of genetic engineering, our own biotech company, Izon Corporation, has unveiled a tomato the size of a volleyball that has a three-year shelf life. This exciting new genetically modified food awaits FDA approval. I can't wait to try that volleyball-sized tomato in my award-winning spaghetti sauce. How about you, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> We're coming up. Man Bites Dog, Who and Why, will tell you next, right after this. You know, I'm sick and tired of our industry either being made light of or being dumped on. Just once, I'd like to see accurate, impartial reporting. The more attention the media directs towards us, the more it makes it seem like we're doing something bizarre or unnatural. Why can't they leave us alone? Even so, Paul, I'm so stoked about the Mother's Milk Project. It's such a good idea, splicing the DNA from a woman into a cow. Imagine relieving women of the discomfort and inconvenience of breastfeeding. No more maternity leaves. No more exposing yourself in public. And the baby gets a milk product that's loaded in vitamins, minerals, fluoride, a full range of vaccines and antibiotics. Talk about a healthy kid. Were you breastfed, George? I wasn't. Heck no. I have a theory about that, too. I think that all the really smart people in the world were bottle-fed with formula. That's why we're way more innovative than people in the poorer countries. You've seen those photos of the kids in the third world desperately sucking on those puny shriveled up breasts trying to get some nutrition? Who knows what kind of software they'd be writing now if they'd been bottle fed. And I'd be willing to bet that every woo-woo anti-science back-to-the-earth environmentalist was breastfed too. 